RS Jamie YouTube channel. So tonight's video um, is very much about the Focus RS Mark III. And I was going to do a video just purely on the RS50 evocation, but then it got me thinking. My RS journey really started again back in 2016 when I got back into the Ford RS scene with the purchase of my first RS Mark III uh, back in 2016. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to give you a bit of a plotted history in terms of my Focus RS Mark III's and the car from 2016 up until 2018 when the Heritage Edition came out and latterly the RS50 evocation. Uh, I've been very, very lucky to essentially have had uh, a Focus RS Mark III from 2016, one again in 2017, uh, when they updated the uh, the engine and made a few modifications to the car, uh, changing the head, and then also the Heritage, and then latterly, obviously, the RS50 evocation pictured here. So, what I get asked a lot is, how did I come to gain the Heritage? How did I come to get that? And so I thought, why not make a video out of it? So. Essentially, my journey started back in 2016, um, or actually slightly earlier, more like 2015, when Ford announced that the RS badge was going to be revived on the Mark III Focus. And the Mark III Focus was a significant car for a couple of reasons. One, it was Ford's first world car when it came to an RS. So it was mass produced across Europe and also America. Secondly, it was the first time that Ford had brought four-wheel drive back to the RS Mark since the Escort Cosworth, which clearly I own as well. So it was a significant car and was launched into a mass audience in America in association uh, as part of the development of the car with Ken Block. Um, the car initially was shown in a blue colour, which was unique and never produced, uh, but nitrous blue became the flagship colour and there was four other colour options that you could choose, which consisted of black, uh, frozen white, grey, um, met uh, metallic grey, which was called magnetic, and also stealth grey, which is kind of a nardo grey, albeit slightly more browny, I would say, uh, and that's actually the rarest colour. Um, I think it looks quite cool, uh, but for me personally, frozen white was the colour that I wanted. And interestingly, I was the only person in the world that didn't want forged wheels. So my first car I picked up uh, at the end of the summer of 2016 from Gates, Ford and St Albans. And it was fully spec. It had every single option, including the sunroof. Um, and I drove it home. The first time I ever drove the car was when it arrived. I never got a test drive or, a, or had a demonstration at all of the car. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I actually sold my Porsche uh, Boxster uh, 981 to get the Focus RS. So it was a complete change. But absolutely loved the car. But couldn't help thinking it was lacking slightly in the styling. Obviously, you look at the previous model, the Mark II, which came out in 2009. Had the wider arches, very similar to kind of Escort Cosworth-esque. And I think the Mark III and Standard guys lacked a little bit. Um, it was more reminiscent of the Sapphire Cosworth. Uh, which was very much like a standard model with additional bumpers. Um, so that instantly gave me the reminder of the Sapphire Cosworth, stuff, which I loved in my youth. Um, hence the Tiger Stripe design, which was reminiscent of those cars. But also um, I added the Triple R composite kit, the side skirts and the front spoiler. And I think my car was the second car in the UK at the time uh, it was the first car after the development car to have that kit fitted. So I was quite an early adapter of the, of the kit and I think it transforms the car and I've pinstriped mine uh, as well. So I had the first car in 2016 and I had it until July 2017 uh, when essentially I did have some problems with my white car. They were not related to the, to the issues that uh, other people experienced. Mine was an isolated issue and it was something that couldn't be fixed and did result in the engine having to be changed. But it, as I said, it was a totally unique issue to my car that had never been seen on any other RS. So complete accident. Because I'm quite a purist, um, I wasn't happy with the idea of the engine being changed. And after a number of conversations, the dealership, not Ford, I might add, um, decided to give me a brand new car in 2017. So I actually ended up driving my white car, which uh, by this point um, we'd taken the tiger stripes off. We'll put a picture of it up on the screen, but essentially my first RS, uh, we put the tiger stripes on. I made it quite unique. 
but I took all of that off before I traded in. And then I picked up a black brand new 17 plate car in July 2017, which within one week totally transformed the look of that car. And again, we'll, we'll pop that on screen. So I totally stealthed it out. Um, and that was really, really cool. All in all, I did 17,000 miles in the white car and 6,500 miles in the black car. However, I, by chance, found out in late 17 that there was going to be some special edition models. So, essentially, first of all, we had the blue edition, which came to the UK. There was 500 blue editions, which was a nitrous blue car with a matte black roof. Uh, interestingly, the RS50 Evocation, the blue car here, is actually an edition uh, model. So there was 500 in the UK, I think 500 in almost every European country and 500 in America. So overall, it is mass produced, but only 500 in each country. And then latterly, the red edition in race red, which looks absolutely lovely. Um, they made 300 of those, same again allocation across, across the world, but 300 of those cars. But I was going to buy a red edition because I liked the colour, I liked how special it was, but then I found out, late 2017, there was going to be a limited run, and that was the Heritage Edition, and there would be an orange car, and only 50 made in the world. So immediately I was like, I've got to have one of these. So the reason behind selling my black car in 2017 was in preparation, knowing that in 18, the orange car's coming. And I needed to put myself in the best possible position to get the orange car. So to do that, I got out of the black car as early as possible so that I didn't lose too much money waiting a year for it. Um, and that essentially is, is the rationale behind. So the orange car arrived in um, 18. I put my order on on the car the day that Ford started taking orders. And I think most people, there was a lot of rumors in the in the market and lots of people on in, on social media, Instagram, saying the cars were all pre-sold, the cars were dictated to who was going to get one. While I knew about the car in advance, at no point was I guaranteed allocation on the car. So the day that uh, they announced it, I got on the phone, I knew that every Ford store was going to get at least one car. So, I thought, what? Everybody went to the obvious Ford stores, but I thought, no, I'm going to pick the least obvious. So, my first call I actually made after the obvious local dealers that would have been convenient for me. I thought, I bet nobody's gone to Ipswich, John Gross. Now, Ipswich, John Gross is where my mum and dad used to buy their cars when I was a kid. Um, so, I thought, let's give John Gross an Ipswich call. And they were absolutely brilliant. I spoke to the sales guy there, it was called Charlie. And those guys could not have been more helpful. They didn't know anything about the heritage. Uh, the Ford dealerships, I don't think, were pre-warned by Ford this car was coming. So most people, when they were ringing up about the cars, it was the first the dealers knew about them. But John Gross were really, really great. They took a £1,000 deposit from me over the phone immediately. They sent me a letter out in the post, first class, saying, you are first in the queue. If this car comes to the Ford store, you're, you're getting it. And that's exactly what happened. I also did that with another dealer. Um, Interestingly, I got two. So everybody that says they were pre-sold, you're talking out your behinds, as uh, Freddie Mercury would say. Um, you don't know what you're talking about. Those cars were not pre-sold, and they were, um, I think, reasonably fairly allocated. Um, of course, I'm going to say that I got a car. You might disagree if you didn't. But equally, I've kept my car and plan to keep it longer term. So I can understand people getting frustrated where people have perhaps used them and profiteered out of them. I don't think that's really fair game. But ultimately, when it's a true enthusiast, somebody that wants to keep it, um, then I think great if you got one. Uh, I bought RS18 Jam, brand new, uh, to, to, to associate the car to me. I also took it to a number of shows the first year. Um, and that car, plays a very very special place in my heart here it is um it's something very very special uh it's probably in my opinion going to be the last ford rs car ever made um it's unique there's 50 of them they're not numbered despite uh certain clubs trying to make out they are they're not numbered they uh there's no real way of telling what order those cars were manufactured um, and I just think there's uh, certain people out there trying to profiteer out of pretending their car is a lower number when there's no numbers associated to the car. If Ford say they're not numbered, they're not numbered. You can pretend all you like. Um, the car was unique 
not just from the fact that it was uh, teeth orange, deep orange, as it actually states on the car, uh, which is a colour that is reminiscent of the early Fords, but actually is a colour that Ford used on the Autobahn transit vans, uh, patrol vans in Germany, and that's why they have the colour. So it's not really a traditional Ford colour. I hate to tell you, uh, any of the purists, but I'm a realist. So there you go. There's an interesting fact for you. Um, it features the uh, carbon fibre bits on the interior, the same as the red and the, the blue editions beforehand. It has orange piping on the engine bay, which is exactly like what you get, uh, which Ma Mount June effectively made that uh, unique for the car. So there's uh, there's orange uh, piping on the, on the Mount June upgrade because it featured the 375 brake horsepower upgrade um, from factory, albeit it was a dealer fit. Um, and it's got a matte black rear spoiler with some blue detailing. I've added the Triple R kit to mine. I've pinstriped it. I've added some badges on mine from DMB. So it's got orange badges instead of blue badges. So I've personalised mine a little bit. It's got a very tasteful small front number plate, which everybody really, really likes. Uh, that car is my pride and joy. I did 800 miles in it uh, last year. Took it to free shows. Um, and I love it. But at the moment, I don't have enough room to keep all the cars at home. I do want to keep the miles low on it, so I've put it in permanent storage. So that brings me now on to the RS50 Evocation. And I did actually manage to get some video of this car before it went back. Um, and when I say it went back, it was a Ford press car. So Ford made free uh, RS50 Evocations. Uh, they were made to commemorate 50 years of the RS brand in the UK. And unlike the Heritage Edition that was made to commemorate 50 years of the Ford Escort. Um, the RS Evocation uh, were free models um, or free cars that Ford took from stock to create this um, model within the UK and the UK only. And I think that's where we're very privileged in the UK because um, no other country has done anything like this. There were two white cars and a nitrous blue car they featured some period style rs graphics on the side uh, they had the 1552 um split rim wheels which are absolutely fantastic they were really they mixed opinion uh but i think anyone that saw the car in the flesh would appreciate they look really really great and they basically had every single option from the mount tune catalog uh taking up to 400 horsepower it has a forged engine forged pistons it's on coilovers it's got the extra carbon fiber rear spoiler on the back and it's an absolute dream um how did I come to have the car? That's uh, the question I get asked the most. So quite simply, I attend a lot of Ford events and over the last few years, I've met a lot of people from Ford. And my birthday, 2018, I happened to be speaking to the Ford press team and I said, do you know what would be really cool? I said, if you lent me one of the evocations for my birthday. And I was joking. It was a bit of a throwaway comment. And they went, OK, no problem. And that's what happened. So I picked it up on the 11th of October last year. Um, I had it initially for five days. And it was brilliant. I took it to a car meet on the Sunday of Focus Owners Club car meet. And I absolutely fell in love with it. I'll be perfectly honest, nitrous blue is probably my least favourite colour, but I fell in love with this car. And I think for me, history and heritage is really, really important. So to be the person that was given this car to use uh, is very, very special. And I'm kind of overwhelmed by the fact it even happened. Um, what's really, really funny is though, I did fall in love with it. So I got a call back from somebody at Ford who will remain nameless, uh, albeit they're quite senior. So you can probably guess anyway said, you really like that car, don't you? I was like, yes, I do. And uh, he was like, do you want to buy it? I said, yeah, absolutely, I'll buy it. Let me know what is the price, what is the deal? And as long as it's reasonable, uh, I'll buy the car. And he said, okay, leave it with me. That was the end of, um, that was a couple of days after I'd, I'd taken it back, because I took it back five days after I picked it up. Anyway, within one week, I'd received a phone call to say, the Focus RS50 Evocation, we can't sell it to you because we want to keep it but do you want it? I was like, what do you mean, do you want it? And they're like, um, you can have it. Um, minimum six months, possibly a year, depending on what we need the car for, if we need to take it back, but you can have it. So I was like, oh, well, 
yes of course yeah thanks very much uh, and i put the phone down i was like i spoke to my i was in the office at the time at work and i said you're not going to believe this to my colleague i just had a phone call they're going to give me a car I'm like what and I'm like yay giving me a car and and that's what happened so i wasn't very vocal at the time about this because somebody's just rung you up they said you can have this car it's totally exclusive we don't want anything back from you just do what you do drive the car use the car and I'm like, so, well, first of all, somebody pinched me. And then secondly, I'm like, I don't want to mess this up. So I need to keep quiet about this situation because I don't know, do Ford want me to tell people? Do Ford not? Uh, and if, had I not been in shock, I'd probably have asked these questions at the time. But I think for me, I was just overwhelmed, being perfectly honest. It's like, what, how, this, how is this even happening? So anyway, within two days, they delivered the car back to me. And I ended up having the car just over six months. Uh, I did 8,000 miles in the car. I used it every day as the car was intended, in my opinion. And that car never missed a beat. And it was absolutely amazing. What a great experience. I missed it massively when it went. Very interestingly, I have since been offered the car to buy. Uh, but I have turned it down. And I'll tell you for why. One, I have the heritage already. And two... I've decided that I'm kind of pulling back from the cars in terms of the cars that I buy. I've got more than enough. Uh, I don't need it. Uh, and I'm focusing my efforts in other areas uh, like property at the moment. And I can't justify this expense of adding another Focus RS that, quite frankly, I don't need. So hopefully somebody else will have that car soon and they'll enjoy it and love it like I did. Um, I'm very, very lucky and fortunate to have been in the position that I've been in. And no matter what happens, nobody can take the memories away from me. And I am overwhelmed with the experience of having it. Um, got some great little videos of the car, which I'm going to share with you now. So you can actually see in the car what it was like and some just some memories, essentially, of my time with that car. This bird poo, though. <laughs> what is that all about? It's as big as my air freshener. It's the biggest bird poo I've ever seen. So typical that it's there the day I wanted to film the car. Um, so yeah, what can we tell you about the car? Let's check it out. Um, shell seats which were an option in the standard RS but in this car which is actually a blue edition uh, they made 500 versions in most European and the US countries um, this has got the blue trim around the edge which I really really like I think it really sets the seats apart uh, really really nice touch very much standard kit inside apart from the emoji fresh RS Jamie air freshener get yours on emoji fresh as somebody else does um, so it's got the carbon fiber around the uh the turbo oil pressure and boost gauges um as i said pretty standard kit this one however has the upgraded m 400x map from mount tune which is really great because you can do all sorts on this and it's got auto launch control uh so i'll show you that in a moment um and it's also got a seamless shift with the M400X. It's got some nice carbon touches around here, along with some uh, parking tickets. Time to leave. Um, yeah, it's emotional really. Last drive ever in the Focus RS Evocation. Um, I'll put it into loving and caring mode. There it goes. I got a lot of stick at the time when that car arrived, when I had that car. But what I would say is, if you want something in life, you have to ask for it. And that's what I did. I, there's no hidden science. Um, and the cars, the brand, it's been a huge part of my life, my entire life. And I absolutely live, sleep and breathe it. And as you can see, as I'm surrounded by, you know, my cars, my memories, um, I'm just a fan. And I think Ford recognised that. What I'd also add as well is that over the course of the last three years, I probably spent about 250,000 pounds of my own money on Ford cars. 
So to anyone that says I don't deserve it, then you're entitled to your opinion. I'm not going to get upset about it. But equally, I'm very grateful for the experience. And people want to be horrible about me and say things about me because ultimately they're jealous. Then that's a reflection more on them than me. But I will keep doing what I'm doing. I'll keep being passionate about the brand and I will keep doing what I love. Um, and I just wanted to share with you guys today some of the memories um, of what was one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me in my life. Um, and that will never be taken away. The Focus RS50 evocation will go down in RS history as um, a car that divided opinion, but ultimately, in my opinion, having witnessed and experienced and lived with it, one of the best cars Ford UK have ever been associated with. But the car that is most fondness in my heart and the car that I love the most is the Focus RS Heritage. Because it does everything well, it's unique, and it was a dream of mine, in addition to having an Escort Cosworth, to own a special edition car. When I grew up, the RS500 came out, the Sierra, and I absolutely was in awe of that car. Latterly, 2009, when I was quite early in my career, um, I remember the RS500 Focus coming out and going and staring at one through a showroom thinking, that's amazing. And I think in life you try and put yourself in a position where one day you can realise the dreams and realise the experiences that you want from the memories that you've had in your earlier life. And fortunately, I put myself in that place that I could and was lucky enough to be able to go and buy the Heritage Edition when it came out. I hope to bring it back out again very soon. Uh, as I said in the, earlier in the video, it is currently in storage, but... It brings a smile to my face every time I think about it. And uh, it's very special to be a custodian of that car. And when I say custodian, it's because that car will long outlive my life, but it will always be associated to me with the RS18 Jam plate. So anyway, that is enough from me. I hope that gives you a bit of an overview of the Focus Mark III RS um, and the limited edition models. Um, that have come since its uh, inception in 2016 uh, with the Heritage and the RS50 Evocation and the other edition models. It's a model that's certainly divided opinion and it's a model that will go down in Ford history as the last RS car ever produced. Um, if we look back in 10 years and I'm wrong, let me know in the comments but I would suggest very strongly it is the last RS. And I think it's a car that will gather more and more fondness as time goes by, which is the case with many of the RS models over the years, when the Mark II was replaced by the Mark III and Mark IV. I know a lot of people were in big favour of, of rear-wheel drive. I certainly as well when the Cosworth model was ended and the Focus Mark I came in again, that divided opinion. And I think this is something that's associated very much with the Ford brand right throughout history. But ultimately, history will decide how the Mark III Focus is revered and how it is viewed by future generations. But I know, having owned a number of them now, they're a fantastic car and they do everything very, very well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've enjoyed my, my story, the background behind the cars. If you have, like, subscribe, feel free to share the video and I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.